Nom, 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 nom. my friends hello hold on what is this what is what we got deus ex playing there we go a little smoother a little calmer all right where are we here we are here all right stand by <laughs> um believe it or not i guess i'm still having some tech issues here <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. Are we? Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Work with me, computer. Work with me. Work with me, please. <sighs> okay, y'all. This was just working, and now it's not because we're live. This is how this works. I don't know if you, I, I don't think you guys can see me. Unfortunately, I don't know. Can you guys hear me at least? Are we at least getting audio? <laughs> what a great triumphant return. Welcome to the stream, folks. Thank you all for coming. Uh, if you are here, thank you for not acting like my computer and being reliable. Shift this over. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Obviously, from the performance of this software right now, I don't 
I'm hoping that this is going to be an okay stream and we can move forward and like get back to normal and stuff. But uh, it seems like my computer is having some issues for some reason. It, it whatever reason it might be, it's always something. Um, but I appreciate you all coming. It's good to be back. It has been a long road over the last couple of weeks. Um, of first getting this computer built so that we could start making content again. And you were, you saw like, we had one stream last week with that. I did the podcast with that, but honestly, it's been a struggle to try and do any real work. Uh, Thank we're you, still missing Thank you very much. I actually just now got my Windows version to be considered genuine again after Windows got mad at me for changing all of our hardware. Um, oh, how's the music? Looks like it's good. So, obviously it's been a little bit inconsistent lately. I don't think I've released a video on the main channel in like two weeks. Um, not be a set the deep dives have slowed down. Uh, obviously the streams haven't been happening. It has not been my favorite status for the channel, but we're super happy to be back. We're very excited about all the stuff that's been happening. And honestly, uh, I think that there is, I think there's a lot coming in the next couple weeks. Starting this week, but we're not really talking about that. We're going to talk about the monthly report today. It's a monthly report kind of time because I haven't gotten to really look at the February monthly report. I hear it's pretty good, um, but I was mostly interested in the core gameplay segment. So now we're going to go through and check out together the different ships. Thank you. Thank you um, very much. The features, the locations, missions, reputation, narrative, characters, art, whatever it is, we're going to look at what's been going on with Star Citizen over the last month and uh, what that might mean for the near future. But before that, I have to say m many more hellos to everybody. I'm like, can we? Is this going to work? Okay. Mm, we're frozen again. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe it's because the camera gets too big. It just doesn't want to include a nice proper large view of me it just wants okay we'll go back to the small these are the this is the fun challenge of, of streaming i would say that this is why i stick to youtube mostly because everything always goes wrong when you stream and you have to fix it live and that's awful Toes. with youtube you can just fix it and post yeah yeah but uh good to see you arcane i saw you pop in here first with the toes gang how you doing my friend Thanks for popping in. And Reese, another Toes Gang member. Well-renowned Toes Gang. Much love to you. Thanks for showing up. Shivo, AKR, Jocks. Good to see ya. Deja. Echo Zeppelin. Just woke up. Right. It's a new time. We haven't formally told you guys that the time is changing, but the time is changing for these streams. Uh, hinted at it a couple times recently. Um, now that we're back in Turkey and the EU, we're going to be starting earlier. And uh, sometimes, possibly even, going a little bit later. But Toes. now you'll be able to see us a few hours earlier than we normally are. And the stream schedules that Mrs. T's posting up every week, you'll see that on the Discord. Robert! Hello. Eating your sandwich. What you got in your sandwich today? Citizen Ninja. Pedro. Zoster. Good to see you all. Eviler and Roth. Hey, it's Ken. There's a name. Neil, Maddie, a Camozil, Stakar, Don's Country Store. Ooh, what kind of country store is that? Is that like just out in the country? You still serve a normal stuff or is it like a country store? Like you only serve country objects. <laughs> What's a country object? Like a boot spur? I don't know. No, oh, Stakar. Ain, thank you for the uh, sub over on YouTube. I see you. Really appreciate the support. Thank you. And we got a shout out from Terrible Bishop. Oh no, AKK got a shout out from Terrible Bishop. Deserves that. I actually uploaded the... We, we have a hype train? Why do we have a hype train going on? How is that even possible? What did I miss here? Wait, Zerb. Oh, I see you subbed up for 34 months, bro. It's been three years. Oh my God, bless you, Zerb. Thank you so much for being here for three years subbed up on the Twitch. Okay, I see Colt gifted out a couple subs. Much appreciation. Thank you. We got some bits from Taryn McLean. Pizza Fund. The Pizza Fund is back in order, folks. 100 bits will buy you a pizza over here almost. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Appreciate you. 
First time in the stream, Pony. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Legafi, good to see you as well. Welcome. I don't know why I missed all this Twitch stuff on my chat. That's weird. It didn't... It is. It did like did not update all this for me. I might have to update my my window. Cause we missed these subs. I'm sorry, folks. Oh my God, AAK dropping subs as well. Gifted out five tier one subs. Thank you, man. Much Thank love. You. Thank you very much. I don't know why this was all gone. There's all my bees dropping a prime sub. Three months, dude. I feel like I've known you for like a year. <laughs> but that's just because you're my bees. All right, I'm catching up on chat. I see you guys where the frames were coming back. Do they update the new player guide? Um, They'll probably update it for 323 because there's a lot of new stuff coming in. Java from 1042's site. Nice, welcome. It was a slideshow like my normal SC performance. Um, Can I, okay, can we, before we get into this, can I just show you guys what Star Citizen looks like running yum, on yum, this yum, 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 yum. wonderful computer that y'all helped us build? Like, it's not the best thing in the world that there's plenty of very well specced computers to run Star Citizen, but my computer journey started in 2011, I believe. No, it was after that. 2012, I think it was. Uh, I built my first computer for music production. Didn't care about the GPU. From there, I think it took me two years, and then I updated to the 1080 Ti. I still have that G GPU from 2014. Still got it. It's in it's in Mrs. Tomato's computer right in front of me. The only other graphics cards I've gotten besides that, because I used that card all the way up until last year. I had my 2080 my 1080 Ti up until 2023, um, when we were graciously gifted a 3080 Ti. So that's what you can like you can see it like right here. This is the very tip of it. Um, is currently running the game. That does a good job, but y'all know that it's the CPU that really does it. And um, I had a, I had a great CPU, it worked very well, but uh, Star Citizen still struggled. When I wasn't at the computer here in Turkey, I was back at home with a 10700K processor, Toes. which you know is decent, but 25 frames per second, maybe. <laughs> My game gets 60 freaking frames per second now, and I'm f***ing losing it. <laughs> it's so cool. I just wanna, I just wanna hop in the game and show you that it actually happens. Cause for me, um, after playing this game for eight years, I've never experienced it actually running like a real game. So it's it just it jumbles my brain, you know, tomato juice and stuff. I am missing gift subs. I don't know why this is happening. Where are my notifications? Uh, activity feed. Whoops, no, activity feed. Okay, here we go. Now it's coming up. All right, Baltson with the sub. Thank you so much. I see you. Sing Reese turned on sing mode. Why is it even a thing? Oh my God. I'll start it after I show you guys this. AAK on my bees. All right, thank you, thank you. Just wanna make sure I'm not missing you guys. Much love, Baltson and Zerb. I know I got you, but I got to get to, got to get you twice there. Mace with the hype sub. Thank you as well. All right, now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how smooth it is. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. You see how like my, my, it, it looks like a video and not pictures. I mean, these people, no computer is going to fix them. Except maybe CIGs, but like, look. Toes. This is crazy. This is like magic to me, okay? <laughs> I've never really played a smooth Star Citizen experience. This is, um, I'm really excited to see what the game feels like now, especially since the next update's also gonna polish the game itself a little bit. Welcome to the next gen. Yeah, oh, by the way, the CPU that we got for this one was a 7800X3D and it runs Star Citizen like a freaking dream. Um, this is not sponsored by AMD, but if you guys are watching, Maybe you could set something up, you know, maybe do do a little something. Oh, you guys, <laughs> you make some cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is a, it's a great processor, these X3D processors because of their V-Cache, I believe it's called. They have a little extra, extra size to their cache. 
uh, up above their equivalents. So I think this one is like a 70 something megabit megabyte cache, whereas normally it'd be around 36. So it does the work. So yeah, this is, I just wanted to show you that like <laughs> the game actually can run well, because for me, this has never been a reality. And I have no other excuses for when I get nom, 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 shot nom. in the head by an NPC. You saw it here first. Dante, thank you for the sub. Appreciate you. Okay, so I'm sitting here and I'm doing myself some sing mode because Reese likes to activate nom, 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 sing nom, 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 nom. mode. F you, Reese. <laughs> Very kidding. Much love to you, Reese. So if you don't understand how this works, you can activate a sing mode on my stream. Makes me want to sing everything. Doesn't make me want to sing it, actually. I just have to. So I'm forced to sing all the things for the next five minutes. Nom, 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 <laughs> nom, nom. Lord Rids said, A tomato. Your South African support is back. So good to see you back. Getting all set up. Able to join SC on another level now. Nom, 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 nom. I'm still slide show mode when I play. I feel you. I get you. Whoa. You also have the 7800 X3D with the 4080 GP. You <laughs> just wanted it to rhyme. Okay. I am not going to start this recording until Pow, pow, pow. This sing mode's off because I'm not singing in a video. I'm gonna close this blind because the sunlight is hot. Freaking bright! We got some bright sunlight coming in through the window. Yes! There we go. All righty, my boys. All righty, my people. Let's talk about some Star Citizen. Where? Okay. Is that five minutes? <laughs> I'm calling that one five minutes. Let's get into this freaking report. Let's go. Time to review some game development. Welcome. Welcome, folks. Welcome. It's the monthly report time. February was like 15 days ago almost, but that that's never going to stop us. All right. We're, we're obsessive. Uh, we're, we're addicted and we enjoy the pain of reading things that we can't play for six months. <laughs> so we're going to... We're gonna go over the monthly report for February and talk about new features and locations and ships and stuff, and maybe something really interesting will come out of it. I do claim that 30 seconds is actually five minutes. <laughs> Was that only one minute? All right. Then let's pretend that we're going for a couple more minutes. No, I'm kidding. For anybody who's watching on YouTube, stream sets up sing mode and it makes me sing and but then they simultaneously hate me for it it's like it's like when you start up star citizen when you want to have a good time and star citizen beats you back and you're like ah i did ask for this i did i'm star citizen here <laughs> chad chat's trying to play it and it's not working terrible metaphor all right let's dive into this it's been a busy start to the year across SC Studios, CIG Studios, sorry, and February was no different. We're going to talk about vehicle progress, cloud rendering developments, and AI updates. I, from skimming, I can say that there's a lot more in there to be hyped about than this, but okay, okay. AI features. As mentioned in last month's report, AI features continue development features for a key initiative, the first iteration of which is planned for Alpha 323. Further details will be revealed in the run-up to release. Is that a global event? 
AI for a key initiative in 323. Maybe it's a new event, but why would they be working on a new event AI stuff right now? Oh my god. I'll have you know, one of the things that got broken over here from the recent storms that hit our house and, <laughs> and messed up everything um, was my keyboard, which was from America. And the replacement is now from Turkey. So a lot of my keys are in different places. And it's, and it's uh, unfortunately, I am the type of person who has to look down for certain keys. Because I'm sorry, I didn't grow up pressing brackets all the time as a kid. Um, <laughs> and I get things wrong a lot now. Do Busta Rhymes flip mode if only, if only. AI Futures began to work on a key AI driven initiative for 323. <laughs> so that's all they're going to say about it. It's a key initiative. This must be one of those things that's not quite on the release view yet. Um, what could that be? This involved a variety of improvements and new behaviors that required frequent discussions between various disciplines. This just does not say much. Hmm. What could that be? AI isn't gonna, f I think the biggest thing that I would hope this was Oh, no, no, no. The The funny thing about the keyboard is it's programmed like yeah, an American yeah, 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 yeah. keyboard because I'm using, I guess, the Windows version I'm using. So it the keys are wrong, but the if I press them, they're still correct. That's the part that throws me off. So like the parentheses buttons are one, one button over. So if I want to press left parentheses, I have to press the right parentheses button. And if I want to get the right parentheses, I have to press the equals key. <laughs> it's funny. You know what? Zinx? Good call. Yeah, it's probably free, uh, creatures. You just bursted my bubble, to be honest. I was going to say that the, the coolest thing this could be would be AI companions. But <laughs> that's, that's such wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> like they can barely even move around on their own. Why would they be able to follow us yet? Yeah, it's it's probably the um, the creatures. Alrighty, pull the key keycaps key out and rearrange them. But then what if? But then I'll, I'll be missing keys. No, like the keyboard has more keys than not, wouldn't I? Let me think. Hold on. Let's see something. If I hit this key, what is this? Okay, so that's a semicolon. Yeah, see, no, they're they're just straight up labeled different. Cause that's the slash. <laughs> oh God, what if that's slash? Okay, that's and what the? Yeah, I don't think it would work to. I think there's extra buttons here. Cause that should be comma. Yeah, there's extras. That's comma, because this is. Oh, there's an emoji button. Hmm. Interestingly, it doesn't let me type in the special characters either. Anyways, who cares? All right. So creatures is the most likely. Um, most likely what this is, but we, you know, we don't know for sure. Don't don't please don't take that and run with it. <laughs> it might not be the case, but we could see creatures in 323. All right. During February. AI tech focused on a variety of improvements alongside future work, including for the navigation system. The main focus of this was on extending the planetary navigation mesh to be able to generate across a whole planet. Let me turn that music down a bit. Due to a limitation of the initial implementation, it currently has a latitude limit at which navigation tiles can be created. However, with the new approach, nav mesh can be generated anywhere on the planet following physics terrain patches. The devs are currently improving the tile border simplification process to make sure all nav mesh tiles connect correctly with each other. The The nav mesh system is, I think, underutilized because AI sucks so much. Because um, you don't see AI too much on planets. But apparently, it's been working on almost the whole planet all this time. Email your keyboard support and ask them to ship your replacement keycaps you'd be missing. Perhaps I might just go pick up a 
an American keyboard, to be honest. It's Mrs. T's going to pick up the niece. Tell her I said hello. All righty. Let's see. For NPCs using trolleys, focus on the exact positioning of trolleys in the environment. Now, an NPC can correctly push a trolley to a location with an arbitrary orientation. The team also improved transit and elevator usage while pushing trolleys so that the overall flow is more robust and fluid. Trolleys. Remember how they released trolleys with these super small wheels? <laughs> Imagine pushing those across the planet. That sounds rough. Spaceship behaviors were also iterated on to deliver better ship versus turret combat. Fighters will now correctly target standalone turrets and perform appropriate combat behaviors. Precision mode. Obviously, this is for the AI side, but we are also getting this ability with precision mode in the next update. And um, turret versus ship gameplay is going to be a lot bigger deal going forward. Numerous updates were added to the Apollo tools, such as improved feedback for errors in missions. For example, the overall box that represents a function turns red when the logic contains errors, because red's bad, except for tomatoes. Those are good. The team also increased usability when navigating between mission callbacks, allowing the designers to jump to the appropriate logic from multiple elements of the interface. A new UI for the subsumption tool is underway, too. Y'all know subsumption. We go over it every time. You get sick of me saying it. Subsumption tool is our, um, is their ability to create logic for AI and for missions. It allows them to create a flow chart that dictates how things will react or act based on what's happening around them. Tax day. Gross, dude. Don't bring that kind of nonsense into this chat. Yuck. Uh, AI tech continued to support PU releases while an important upcoming feature continued development, which can be experienced in Alpha 3.23. What is that feature? What does that mean? Art from the ship's side. This is, they call it art. This is essentially just the ship's update section. Last month, progress was made on the RSI Polaris, with the exterior progressing to LOD 0 and the interior approaching its gray box review. Some interior sections were worked up to establish a visual target while others were designed to accommodate gameplay and improve alignment with the art direction. That's pretty big. Lod zero on the exterior is good. That's solid. Makes sense though, given where the Polaris was during Citizen Con, because that was, I think they showed us maybe a gray box Polaris exterior during Citizen Con. This is such dramatic music, can we? <laughs> Let's be a little more casual music, a little PC DJ. So yeah, Polaris going to LOD zero is good. LOD zero means um, this is basically you can you can measure the detail that a ship is finished by its level of detail rating. So LOD means level of detail. If you have the level of detail art at 50 meters, that means you've detailed the ship up enough that it looks believable at 50 meters. LOD zero then means you are zero meters away and the ship looks believable. So they have gotten it down to the, the most minute details, at least in terms of geometry. Now they can start to work on things like lighting and textures and other stuff like that. As for the interior, they haven't gotten to that point. They're still at the gray box review, which is kind of like something you'd see right here, I, I would say. Yeah, so this is the RSI Zeus in gray box. So this is kind of gray box looking. It's how we saw the exterior of the Polaris uh, late last year. So this is still a while away and even after the art's done, they're gonna have a ton of gameplay stuff to work on with this So I still wouldn't expect it till end of year at the earliest Shouldn't you're not hearing any music is it just that quiet? Let's see How about now New computer new music who dis should you get the Polaris to hold you over until they release the Perseus? Well, what do you have the Perseus for? Different ships, but I mean, the Polaris will be the first capital. All right. Two upcoming variants. Progress through the pipeline. 
One continued its Lod Zero pass, the other passed the Lod Zero gate review. Hmm. The latter then moved on to the final damage and Lod passes while its UV2 and paints were completed and approved. There's nothing really to know about that. Two upcoming variants could be anything. Um, it's not the G12s because that's three variants. What else could that be? Just here for the gems. <laughs> what about the jellies though? All right, the gold standard pass continued for the Aegis Retaliator, which is currently awaiting gray box gate review. Feedback from a recent sanity review is currently underway. The ship's base cargo and bombing and torpedo modules are also progressing well following minor art direction feedback. And you hear that, uh, that M word modularity, things get a little intense. We haven't seen too much on modules recently, but we do know that it's in the works. We've seen them for the the Galaxy. That was kind of a big point, actually, when they released the Galaxy, at least the concept. And we've seen a little bit of it regarding the Retaliator. Let me see if I can find that video. Wow, I do not have... That doesn't make sense. No, I definitely should have that footage. Mm. So here's some of the footage we have from the Retaliator's gold standard update. As you can see, it they I think they changed. Yeah, they, they removed this airlock down here. Doors look slightly different, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, there's more space for the doors. Yeah, no more airlocks on the bottom and top, though. I think they moved. Here's the elevator they updated. Ah, okay, so they put the airlock where the elevator was. And then the elevator. That was, that was anticlimactic. Let's look at the other one. So here is the gold standard, what it's supposed to look like inside. This is from a couple years ago, so it might have updated a bit since here. Uh, but you can get an idea. Retaliator is a bigger ship than I think it is. Every time I think about it, I don't think of a ship that's big enough to have a space in it like this, but this is just one part of the ship too. The big statement for you is that the last blocker for modularity had been cleared. Did they say that? Honestly, they said that at... Oh no, that's right. They did not say that at CitizenCon. I said that at CitizenCon. <laughs> that was my, that was my, um. One of those rare times when I like to try and make a prediction. I do think that modularity is coming with the Retaliator. I think they made that pretty clear um, at CitizenCon, and I'm pretty sure if you look up Retaliator modularity or something, yeah, the video pops up. So if you go and watch this video, this has a decent summary of the stuff that they said. Actually, see if I can play it right here. Uh, when we have that, uh, Retaliator modules will probably be the first thing that come online using it. Yeah, so um, here's John Crew. They, also, they are... by the way, uh, John Crew is currently in the hospital. So, you know, good wishes to him. I hope his recovery is fast. I won't get deep into what happened. He um, had a medical emergency, had to get a uh, medical surgery to remove an ulcer, and is recovering in the hospital. That's all I know. He just updated us on Twitter. Um, but he seems to be okay, back up and communicating and stuff. Just had a, a rough week. So thoughts out to him. Thanks so much for, for what you do, man. And I hope he gets better soon. But here he is. And this is, I think, back in 2020. Little streamception here. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. Gross. Uh, 2020. Yeah, so here's John Crew in 2020 talking about it. Like the underside pods, the yeah, still still planned. Um, they they are those ones are actually technically blocked, um, but that's the the same tech blocker as we have with the retaliator modules. So uh, when we have that, 
uh, retaliator modules will probably be the first thing that come online using it and then we can go back through the the catalog of ships that have that same sort of modular room functionality and implement that oh so they have definitely been strong on their messaging that this is going to be the retaliator the is going to be the ship criteria of work so looking at the cockpit look at the components adding all the things checking everything's to metric but because it's got an interior then here we go this last year last pretty summer much figured out the last hurdle and in fact chris is responsible for the test that i got him to do uh for it uh where we can have object containers which is the interior collection of assets loaded as an item loaded onto the ship because that's how the rear of the whole sea is attached to the ship and moves with it uh what had stopped us technically uh, going any further with this was uh, items inside those object containers couldn't talk to the vehicle it was connected to. Right. So the example of the retaliator, the torpedo droppy arms, they're actually part of the exterior of the ship currently because that's the only way they can work. So if we allowed you to swap the modules, no matter what module you had, there'd be a pair of torpedo arms dangling through the middle of it. Uh, Chris did a test where he attached a load of missile racks and torpedoes to the inside of the back of the hull sea, which is not going to ship with it. <laughs> Wait, you're saying we're not having a torpedo hull sea? Yeah. There, there is a shelf that says, do not submit in very large places. <laughs> um, and the pilot had full control of that, and they could fire them. So after the whole sea ships and we found any more quirks with that setup, we're in a position where, to my knowledge, touch wood, technically there's nothing stopping us doing modularity now that was the boom so that was last summer and obviously there was a little more work they did have to do with it but it makes sense now that they're coming out with modularity with the aegis retaliator this year it seems space Mato is one of the is one star citizens room with the slickest haircut i thank you i appreciate i honestly don't spend too much time on this i need to get a haircut to be honest but thanks much love just woke up and there's a tomato on your TV. Just woke up and there's a Signusian in chat. Nom, 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 nom. I just think of Senbei now. All right. Let's continue. Two unannounced vehicles passed their Lot Zero gate reviews as well. Remember, that means high detail. With only one minor issue to resolve between them. Both will now move into the final phase of development that implements damage meshes, dam damage meshes and uh, LODs. That's um, that's interesting to me because sorry, that's interesting to me because this is another another pair of unannounced vehicles. But this could also go back to our um, our video from late last year with all those different ships and stuff that were going on. This might be something that was from there, and we just don't know about it yet. So we've got the Polaris. Two upcoming variants, that's three. Age of Retaliator is four, that's an update, we won't count that. Uh, two of these is five. Zeus is, we'll say six, seven, eight. And another ship was completed polish, that's nine. Uh, another one's going through white box. Wow, white box, gray box, and Lod Zero? That must be like a hover bike or something. So that's 10. 10 ships they've got, 10 new ships they've got uh, listed here, getting work on, put on them. Hornet MK2. What would the Hornet MK2 be though? Because this is two vehicles, this is two variants, and this is a white box ship, unless they had to start over with the white box for the MK2. The RSI Zeus is approaching the end of Great Box as well. That's what we're seeing down here. With the team polishing geometry around the ship, a redesign of the cargo hold is ne nearly complete, as are changes to the inner frame of the ramp and ramp piston mechanism. I'm sorry, you you did what to the mechanism? <laughs> it's that little, little cars joke there. Additional high frequency detail was added to help increase the illusion of inner structure between the exterior hull and the chassis, while maneuvering thrusters on the nose were moved to allow for better integration into the surface. A redesign of the ship-to-ship -ship docking ring door and frame was done to better fit the RSI aesthetic, while the mess hall was highly polished. Gotta have a good mess hall. The ship's habitation is currently being updated. The central hallway bulwarks were widened to allow for better navigation and consistency too. Polish was completed on another new ship, while yet another polish 
prog progressed through white box, gray box, and lot zero. A final lighting pass will be done soon before damage and lot work. Y'all want to check it? Hey, that's us. Thanks for being here, y'all. Um, let's check out... Just trying to find the... Man, I wish it was easier to find the official channel. Let's check out what the Zeus looks like. Because a lot of people are into this ship. In fact, a lot of people were like, oh, this came out? I don't really care about the spirit anymore. Which, I get it. It's definitely a, a lot better for I'll certain applications. Go through this. But this is like a new, pretty, it's like a mid-sized, large, small ship kind of thing. Like, planet. You got a decent-sized cargo bay and plenty of interior space for multiple people. You got three seats up front on all of the different variants. And uh, ultimately, pretty good-looking styling. Let's check it out. Oh, Shall we? They, they cheered me on. <laughs> okay. Hello, Luna Maria. As you guys have seen with the Spirit and with the many ships we've released thus far, our ships can, when they're finished, look absolutely gorgeous. But before any of them get to that point, they have to grow through a very specific development process. And this is the first stage in that process. We call this white box. At this point, we've taken the concept, ripped it to shreds, and then reassembled it and plugged it all back together within the editor so that we can get a real good look at what players are gonna see when they finally get this game. At this stage, with the Zeus, we've already ripped out all the thrusters, we've ripped out the landing gear, the turret, the seats, the beds, all of the interior spaces, plug those guys back in, and we have what you see here. So again, the beginning of the process. At this point, we're able to jump in, start throwing in cargo, interacting with doors, getting in and out of beds, maybe in and out of toilets, and just getting an overall sense of what it feels like to interact with the vehicle. And it is very common that in this stage, we will make some adjustments from the original plan. As an example <laughs> on this ship, literally, literally as, as they've, they've just said in the report. report. We just made the decision to expand the center corridor, add a little bit more space to the rooms, and as a result, that's gonna make it much smoother experience for players to traverse the, in the, the interior of the ship, as well as for AI to traverse the interior of the ship. We've also expanded the main airlock that leads to the enter exit ladder. And up here in the cockpit, we've separated the co-pilot seats a tad bit just to allow players to get in and out a little easier. So with white box, not the prettiest stage in the process, but it is essential that we nail this because it means we'll be able to deliver a- Hold up. Hold up. Y'all are getting, are getting echo? an echo? A voice echo? Is that because of, uh, wait, let me see if that's because of the- Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. How about now? Any echo? I think it was, uh, the overlay for some reason seems to be detecting a different it's only on that only on that overlay only when I switch to full screen it seems to detect a new audio platform that's really weird what is that coming from man <laughs> technology back I think it was detecting my camera's microphone there for some reason let's continue a beautiful ship that is also extremely fun to play Okay, good continuation. I'm glad we got real far there. So the the Zeus is a pretty solid ship. You heading out? All right, see you later. Yeah, it was the camera microphone, I believe. Um, it's either the camp, I don't know. How many microphones are in my room? I don't know. Who's listening? CIA, FBI, Turkish government. Are you guys in here? Which mic are you using? Hmm? Hmm? Suckers. 
They think they're smooth, but they don't know. Still waiting for that 600i gold standard update. Wow. If only the 600i was needed for Squadron 42. The background music is giving Tron and you're here for it. Yeah, like Adagio for Tron or Solar Sailor. I feel like that, yeah, that actually, that song's pretty close to something like Solar Sailor. Love that out, that uh, OST. I need to get the vinyl for that. Billy, thanks for the 100 bits, bro. I freaking appreciate it. And I think I saw, um, could have sworn I saw Senior Citizen up in here i saw you just follow one of the where did that message go thank you by the way for the <laughs> letting me know about the echo guys the mr but you feel like you wouldn't be able to fully use it as a solo right so that's the big thing about this ship this is going to be a great ship, but this also might not be a great choice if you're going solo. Because it has three, three standard seats inside, they're going to expect this to be a crewed ship. And the gameplay now is not the same as it's going to be in the future. It's not going to be the same as the gameplay we have in the future when we have engineering and other reasons to stay active on a ship. I can't tell if y'all are talking about the Echo. <laughs> you saw some people talking about the Polaris potentially releasing in May with Invictus. People get too excited for these ships, man. Not even the Zeus would release in May. Like, I, I you couldn't convince me that they would rush it that much. Um, and the Zeus is still in gray box. End of gray box. I think the Polaris would be a IAE ship, maybe, or a Citizen Con ship or something. I think that's still a ways away because it's not just the art. This is only the art section. Uh, they haven't talked about the functionality. Remember, it's a capital ship. We don't necessarily know no, no, how no, 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 no. they're going to need to work on gameplay to support components and capital ships and stuff like that. Largest reasonable solo ships would likely be the spirits. Don't don't get it wrong. You can solo these ships. It just might not be super effective. I think that you'll still easily be able to play the game in one of these ships um but i think you're going to be spending more money spending more time and maybe not having as as clean of missions when doing that that doesn't mean you can't it just means that your experience might not be as smooth as others that's your choice you want to play solo play solo but the smaller ship you stick to the more easy that's going to be Anything slated to be released for Invictus? Not that we know of. They won't tell us what's coming in Invictus. They like to do a little surprise, surprise. They'll probably do one straight to flyable and one concept. All right, let's move on to weapons. Art on the weapon side, very important topic. Weapon art, no offense to weapons artists, honestly. It actually is an important topic, just like you wouldn't think of that in a space sim, I guess. Yeah, maybe you would. Weapon art worked through a host of updates planned for Alpha 323, including scope magnification and optic improvements. The aim is to overhaul the whole scope system to bring it up to modern FPS standards. The existing iron sights across all weapons were updated too. Alongside this, updates were made to improve streamline reloading across all weapons. They actually covered that in, in uh, Inside Star Citizen last week. Um, yeah, they have some good examples here, I'll show you. So I think the biggest thing here is actually the reloading. Um, reloading and packing. Reloading from your backpack and packing are, are pretty big deals. This is something that's been planned for Star Citizen for a while, and I think it's a really interesting topic. I'm actually trying to find more FPS-focused YouTubers that cover this, because um, I think there is a good chance to compare this kind of FPS improvements to your, your bigger FPS games, like maybe Battlefield or Tarkov. I don't know, maybe, maybe Goat or Level Cap would want to talk about it, but there are some significant changes coming to the FPS system here that they've been talking about, and I love them, honestly. You can already see from the HUD down here in the bottom right. You actually can't because I'm blocking it with my big head. Here we go. 
already you can tell that these elements in the bottom right are way better in detail, in description, in um, in inform information. You can see what kind of fire mode you have, how much ammo you have, how many magazines you have, what the ammo in those magazines are. You can tell that you've got back ammo in your backpack here. Um, you have plenty of button prompts to tell you how these things work. Once you're reloading, it actually tells you that the ammo is coming from the backpack rather than not. And the, the reason for this, as they describe in this episode, is that basically they want you to be able to reload without taking you away from the game. So you get a penalty because it's on your backpack, but you still get to use it because you've got it. And I'm honestly, I'm so grateful for that because y'all know how much I will literally drop a gun because I think I don't have ammo and then go into my inventory later and be like, oh, I had ammo and now I don't have the gun. So I think it's a fantastic system. I love that it just comes with a time penalty and um, like the animations and everything we're seeing. I am wondering how they're gonna animate the hand in the backpack. They're just gonna have your am hand like glitch up into your backpack to grab the ammo or is there some kind of canned animation for it? The other thing here is ammo stacking. So this one's a little more contentious, I think, because this one kind of leans more into that sim crowd and people like Tarkov and stuff of like manually loading weapons and ammo and stuff, but it also heavily simplifies it by making it basically a one button prompt. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I am ready to find try this out in the game and see how it feels but I was also very interested in this idea of like managing our ammo. But I got to admit, I think bullet by bullet is too much, you know, especially in a game that's not about FPS. It's this is this is a space sim. There's a whole bunch of things to include here. Maybe bullet by bullet management isn't the best. I think this is a decent middle ground. But I do understand, you know, if people think it's a little bit too arcadey, essentially and you can see this happening in the bottom right hand corner here. What you can do is you can go into your inventory, find two clips of different types of ammo or the same ammo, but different amounts or multiple clips. You press and hold a button and it will automatically combine that ammo into one magazine for you. You can see in the bottom right hand here, that's what they just did. So to do that, to kind of show you that again, 15 ammo and he fills it up with the 15 from the other one and it leaves 15 in that last one. So you, they, they keep showing it off here, different examples. This is shotgun. See it stacks up all the different ammos from the different magazines um, and does it really seamlessly, you know? Again, that's a single button press. So it's kind of like, hmm, do you want it? Do you need it? Or should it just be automatic anyways? I think this is a good compromise again. And before somebody is upset that he says clips and not mags, I literally every single time I think of talking about weapons, I have to consciously in my head be like, okay, make sure to say magazines, make sure to make say magazines, because as soon as you say clips, <laughs> random question, you're switching from Patreon to YouTube for sub. Would you guys need my referral code again? Nah, no problem. Toes. We've already got it. It'll be right back in there. Repooling shouldn't be a thing. Why do you say that? You, it discards empty magazines. I don't know if you can still carry those around. Preferred having to find cover and open the backpack to find ammo, but realism isn't always fun. Yeah, I think You still hopefully find cover, but this does speed it up a little bit. Takes less time than backpack reloading. It needs to be longer. Takes less time than backpack reloading. I don't think it's necessarily meant to replace reloading though. I think this is more so to kind of save yourself some, uh, save yourself some time in the future and save yourself some space. Always think of uh, Bangalore from Apex Legends. Clips are what civvies use in their hair. <laughs> so there's ammo repacking, there's the reloading stuff, and then there's what they just talked about, which was the, the scope changes. 
And actually, I'm going to show you what they showed us at CitizenCon for the scope changes, because that's more indicative of their long-term goal. What they're showing us in that episode is 323. So don't get it wrong. It's not like what I'm about to show you is what we're getting in 323. But I think this should be shown also because it... Oh, you know what? Actually... It's not, no, 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 it's not here. It is, uh, mm, here. So this is the long term, and I think it's worth seeing this because people are like, hey, you know, this is good, but maybe they should do a little bit more with, like, the, uh, the way the light refracts and stuff. And once you get the chance to see this, you see that they're actually working towards that. But where was it? Is this the wrong panel? What heck can... Uh, is that it? No. Sound effects. This might have been during a different part of CitizenCon, actually. Ah, here we are. So I think this showed the proper zoom effects. Let's see. You can see it kind of, the scope is already active, right? It, it's refracting light um, and doing all the stuff without you actually having to be right behind it, showing that it's physicalized in the game. Blocks the light and stuff. And yeah, so in this situation, it's zooming what's in the lens, but not what's outside of the lens. This is kind of that previs of like, this is where we're going. Don't forget this. Uh, we aren't going to just leave it as is, but I think they're still having some problems getting it to look just like this compared to what we're getting in 323. Oh, that did actually zoom in the screen though. Maybe I'm wrong. Is there any actual zoom there? I feel like there is, but I might be an idiot. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's not, no. Actually, I don't think there is zoom there. They definitely zoom in the whole screen here. So I might be wrong about that. I, d I thought that they showed off the actual zoom effects without zooming the outside. That is their goal, but maybe they didn't actually show it here. How do you consolidate ammo rounds with batteries and energy weapons? You just rip the batteries apart and stick them back together. That's like, that's how you recharge batteries. You just touch the outlets to each other. Boom. Good to go. The pip thing was never shown in teasers. The pip thing? Is there anything else that they showed us? Oh, the iron sights, right. Yeah, you can't tell too much of that in this video unless you know the weapons really well, but the iron sights that they show here are definitely giving you better visibility. Other things that are interesting to look at here though are mission Mission objectives in the top right, looking pretty clean. Uh, reputation system in the bottom left. N updates are slightly, or the um, little notifications are slightly updated on the top of the screen, the way they spawn in. It's a little cleaner. And then also <laughs> down here, holy crap, down here there's a lot going on. But again, this updated HUD, which is the, lies the visor and lens system, I think is such a, such a freaking great quality of life update to this game. It is needed. All right, down to core gameplay. This is the most exciting part of all of this. Gotta stick your tongue on it to recharge properly. CIG said that, or are you assuming? Um, I, gotta, I gotta think and make sure I'm not just creating my own memories here. Hold on. Let me see if they say that here. Red dot scope of uh, sight. We've got lens distortions. You can see this little refraction and bending of light on it. I see it works when you, you don't have to be actually holding the rifle for it to work. Yeah. We've got a correct emulation of eye relief on the scope. 
So we have the blur, distortions, uh, chromatic aberration. And then we've also got support for digital displays like this one, which has light amplification and has uh, support for EMPs. Uh, you know, if you get an EMP, you're going to have the, the displays going to get distorted. So we're quite proud of this. We think it's going to be a much better, more realistic uh, simulation of the scopes in the game. And I think I've kind of mentioned before, but it's, it's not a fake effect. It, it applies to our scopes no matter where they are. You don't have to be using the scope. You could look down somebody else's scope and see the same thing. It's fully integrated into it, so it's really quite proud of that. Yeah, see, maybe they didn't say it here. I swear they said it before, but I won't. Don't take my word for it. Let's go with, uh, that's my assumption and not them. I am interested, though, when he says that you can look down somebody else's scope. Does that mean, like, if you can look down somebody else's scope, is it going to magnify? Or are you just going to see the unscoped scope in their, in their scope site? Man, I really, I really feel like they said that at some point. Hmm. Did they showcase physical helmets with the new visor update? No, I don't think so. Your video with Yogi has made so many Redditors who hate PvP so happy. <laughs> I, I think... Um, I think people shouldn't... Shouldn't... Shouldn't summarize that video in one sentence. It's probably gonna help them not get disappointed later. YouTube just dropped you due to an ad glitch. <laughs> Come on, YouTube. Got to make sure you aren't creating your own memories. Yeah. I'm just injecting memories into my brain here now. That is one that I'm unsure of. I will say that uh, most of the things that I say about Star Citizen, I have something to pull up for it, but not the scopes. I don't have anything for that. What's up, Mini? All right, F core gameplay. Oh, this is good. February saw the core gameplay pillar continue to refine and improve new backpack reloading ahead of QA testing. Just looked at that. For example, magazines are now repacked in a player's inventory, so multiple half-empty mags are condensed into fewer full ones. Support continued for the ongoing scope updates including correctly folding down iron sights when sights are attached. Support for blur on the outside of the sights is currently underway. The team also enabled the weapon customization UI to look more holographic ahead of a UI styling pass. So support for blurring the outside of sights is a thing. But nothing about just straight up making it unzoomed. That might just be too much effort. Um, might take some render to texture tech and oh, render to texture. For item, wear, and misfire, further work was completed on the accumulator system. Additional tools were implemented to make working and testing the system easier too. This is one of those little things that's supposed to make playing the game, like when you're talking about playing the game and then you're like, oh yeah, but why would I do that? Why would I take that? Why would I pick that up? That's one of those features that's why, because of wear and tear and stuff like that. If you are using a gun, or let's say you're you're moving around in space, right? Um, using your track to beam, pulling yourself around, cool, doing all this stuff. And then you're a cargo hauler. You go and you lift up a couple boxes, cool, you move some stuff. Suddenly your, your track to beam tool is dead. Battery's gone. You can't do anything. Now you have to start to think about, okay, well, that's why I brought extra batteries. That's why I have batteries in my backpack. That's why I have a, a full-size tractor beam tool. There's, there are like little things like charge and drain and wear and tear that are supposed to make the things we use kind of temporary, or at least something that we have to pay attention to. And uh, this is definitely one of them. Let me show you kind of what this is gonna look like. It's not crazy either. There are, there are plenty of games that do stuff like this. And I think this will be less in your face than some of those other games. Okay, on. Um, but still something to make you think about the choices you're making and, you know, consider what's what's going on with your equipment. Unchanged. And you should be able to hear the audio as well. It's, it's get growlier. <laughs> okay, on to some consequences. So, just, it's not all visual, so we're gonna stop in misfire. So the first thing that's gonna happen is, you press the trigger, your gun doesn't fire. The second thing that happens in this video, 
you got. I hope I hope you, you guys know what's happening. So he goes get it, and then he goes click. That's the bullet getting lodged in the chamber, right? So we gotta Harris. fix it. He's telling us to fix it. We're hitting the button. We're hitting the button. Our enemy's firing on us. So you got some options. You don't have to fix it. You could holster your gun. You could pull out a new gun. Uh, you could use that new looting interface that Ines showed to, to grab a better gun. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. Tyrus. Ooh. Ooh. This section with the features that's tangentially related to where, and that's the dirt accumulation. So here again, we're going to see a simulation of dirt accumulating over time on the, on the same rifles we saw before. But in the actual game, this would be based on your activities and the environment you're in. So if you're running around in a sandstorm, you're rolling in mud, uh, you leave your gun outside proper storage, the, it's going to accumulate dirt. And that's going to increase the rate at which it wears. So the, the dirtier your gun is, the faster it will wear out. And this is true for other biome accumulations, like uh, frost. So let's take a look at this one as well. Oh, or not. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so in the future, it's going to be really important that you keep your guns clean and repaired. Uh, I'm now going to welcome Zach on stage, and he's going to talk to you more about the FPS weapons. Thank you very much. All right, so that's, um, again, not a big system, but it adds up. This is something that's gonna be true for components, for the vehicles you're driving, for the armor you have, the guns you have, your own body, actually. Like, hold on, literally, your own body will go through this, watch. If you take too much damage, you remember uh, the death of a spaceman, we went over it, it's on Space Tomato 2, two months ago, maybe? Check it out if, you, if you're interested. There are, actual there are um oh no are you serious <sighs> i saved i accidentally saved a ton of files with the same name so it pops up so many files when i type in cybernetics um death of a spaceman you can lose multiple lives if you do that and you maybe don't have good health insurance. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're going to say, but like if you don't have the best services, um, or maybe you just decide to go a different way, you will have wear and tear in your body, and that can be replaced by cybernetics. And they've been working on these for quite some time. This video itself is from like 2021, so we know that this is just ingrained into the design and the ideas. They could always go back on this. I don't think they will. I think this is a very easy sort of aesthetic, cool thing to do for bodies and showing wear and tear, but it just, it's to show kind of how universal this idea of, you can have all these things, all these wonderful things in the game, but if you don't lose them right, wait, if you don't use them right, you're gonna lose them right. Good fun. Yay. Thanks inefficiencies. All right, for player interaction, the team spends a lot of time bug fixing and polishing. I hear that they never fix bugs in this game. They also added a game option to hide the F prompt and added a new control hint for when an off-screen interaction is available. We should also remember this, hiding the F prompt, and I believe they said hiding the dynamic crosshair uh, whenever they do bring up new things, whether they be UI or something similar, and people start losing their minds. Remember that they do let us, they, they let us hide stuff. There's options. You don't want a crosshair, don't use the crosshair. You don't like F prompts, turn the F prompt up. I just, every time I feel like they talk about something like this, you get like a wave of just, this isn't what Star Citizen is supposed to be. This isn't correct, why are they doing it? And then they're like, well, you don't have to have it on. And it always seems to be, that's the answer. Except for engineering, sorry. You gotta have in master mode. Sorry, you gotta have those on. <laughs> Cheapo players will have full cyborgs within three weeks of release. It sounds like a goal. If you could replace all of yourself with robotics in this game, that would actually be, I would probably do that for at least one character. This is what you want. The more you reprint, the more you wear on your character. Yeah. Taking devastating damage, like getting hit by an Idris railgun outside your ship. Yikesies. 
feel like I probably would get just a whole cybernetic body in that instance. <laughs> they don't want it in the game at all. But why not? What's the problem with having F prompts in the game if you don't have to have them on your screen? Downside of going all chrome, cyberpsychosis, of course, something that totally should have been in Cyberpunk 2077. Like, why was there not a whole freaking subplot about possible cyberpsychosis? Ah, I was really hoping that they were gonna do like what they did with malaria in Far Cry 2. That'd have been really sick. Won't need medics if you're a cyborg. Just an engineer. <laughs> Just somebody with a multi-tool. Okay. The devs, my friends, then added the ability to show the loot screen from the interaction wheel. A People will also now auto-crouch if the object they're looting is below them. Cool. Awesome. Sounds like a fun way to try and dodge gunfire. Support was added to automatically open the inventory UI instead of the loot screen if the lootable container is above a certain capacity too. Okay. This is one of those sentences that um, I like because it just cleared up a really big question I had. I was wondering if they were going to get rid of the inventory UI because I saw a couple of different things that maybe hinted at it, but this is kind of confirming that they're not. You can either open up the looting inventory UI or the actual inventory UI. The new looting screen is pretty cool. Uh, looks like this. Much more streamlined than what we're using right now and much faster to use. In fact, you can see from the very beginning. Okay, you're gonna play. So this is much faster, obviously much smoother. Uh, gives you access to the essentials. They they did say that they're going to have armor and armor attachments on here as well, so it's not just weapon stuff. But being able to just quickly shift things in and out, customize your weapons, change out your ammo composition, uh, all of that at the click of a button, much better in my opinion. But I was I was hoping that this would do away with the the inventory UI. I'm wondering what they're going to do with inventory because it's I don't think it should put you in third person. I think that's weird. I don't know. We'll have to see. But this is the looting screen that they're talking about right now. Toes! We want gun fails but no mag reloads. It's either arc game or attack shooter, which one? I mean, you can pick and choose features. That's the, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to fit into a genre exactly. You pick things that work for the game you're building. Um, they want people to be able to move quickly and and not spend too much time micromanaging with reloads to the magazines with quick quick mag packing um but they also want people to have to deal with the consequences of not preparing themselves which is gun jams gives access to everything on the outside so no pocket contents no backpack contents just armor and attached armor attached to armor um yeah, yeah, it's not your backpack. But I was really hoping that we would also have like a backpack UI. Because if you look at the stuff that they were talking about with cargo, it did kind of look like they were replacing cargo UI with some little screens. So you can see screens on each of the cargo boxes. And I was thinking, hey, that's a fantastic way to be able to get rid of using the, the UI the third person UI whenever you're interacting with cargo, which let's be honest, containers, the new containers they've added are going to be one of the biggest ways that we do that. So I thought this was a big way of them minimizing that, but maybe they are keeping the UI, the inventory UI. Shosh, thank you for the kind words on the podcast. It was good fun. Paper doll works fine. I think they're keeping the paper doll. Oh, you mean the, oh, on the, um, you meant on the Moby Glass app. Not seeing yourself while getting dressed seems like a huge downgrade. 
Man, think of all the think of all the people who can't see themselves. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. We'll have to see, but I do I do like more of the idea of physic physical equipping and unequipping of stuff. What's up, Sickman? Sick Sickma Sickman? How you doing, Sick? <laughs> All right, the devs then added the ability to show the loot screen. We already read that. The team are working on a replacement for the legacy quick buy UI using building blocks. Thank God. This will also be used for renting vehicles during events. Work continued on the freight elevator kiosk UI backend too. Important UIs. For the ongoing visor and lens HUD rework, progress continued on various UI elements, including priority notifications, mission objectives, and chat. Regarding EVA, Core Gameplay continued to implement and improve networking support and ensured that players' arms and held entities don't clip into their torso when traversing and rotating. All of this, like, these are, these are such Ah! Where's my dang bleeping button? These are such f***ing hard-hitting additions. <laughs> I can't get over the fact that this, I'm making a video just about this segment of the monthly report because the amount of stupidly simple stuff that has pained us to no end that's getting fixed in just this segment is, man, it's gratifying. I can't say it's getting fixed for sure. I guess that's going a little too far. Stuff that's getting updated though. If I had read any single one of these three sentences like two years ago on a monthly report, I'd be like, oh, oh. And I just kind of pass yeah, over yeah, it because, yeah, yeah. well, we're finally here. With engineering coming, you wonder if we can disable gravity permanent and just EVA around the ship. Yes, from what I understand, you can. Let you turn off the banner notifications. Just a nice little blinking light in the top corner would be cool. All right, for prone animations, players will not be forced out when they perform actions that require them to crouch, such as melee attacks. I can't melee while I'm prone. Further locomotion improvements were made in collaboration with the animation team too. Love me some locomotion. For master modes, core gameplay continued working with design to tune archetypes. Man, we talked a lot about archetypes in the podcast. Uh, was that two days ago? talked a lot about archetypes they have so far completed around 90 percent of the initial conversion with further tuning passes and refinement to be done before release i think the biggest thing to know about master modes is that it's like a very long-term thing everything that they're talking about doing with master modes now is kind of just a base layer it's not it's not the icing on top you know you don't care about commodities you don't want to know about potatoes moving three cents for some people, that's millions of dollars in difference, Ain. You gotta think about the investors. Always think about the investors. That's what video game companies do. That's what responsible people do. That's what the tech companies do. Investors and CEOs, buddy. Sometimes you gotta have that push notification because <laughs> it boosts their ego. Oh, that's a different kind of CEO. Uh-huh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's more the Elon Musk approach. Oh, it was a good time. It was, a, it was a fun podcast. I do, I do know, um, obviously have noticed that uh, it has caused a some, some whispers and murmurs in the community. <laughs> Man, it's funny. I think I remember live doing the podcast when, um, when Yogi said his line, I was like, I hope people don't just focus on that, but they did. And I, it's, it, it makes sense in the context of the whole pod, but obviously it gets clipped out and then it gets used and passed around and like people talk about it a lot. And I do end up hoping that, uh, that doesn't, it uh, doesn't make CIG nervous about allowing that kind of stuff before. Cause I'm super freaking grateful to them for letting us have a kind of conversation like that. It was hugely beneficial, I think, to the community and, you know, one wrong reaction can kind of make that less of a thing so i i love that we got to do that i'm i'm over the moon about the fact that we were given the opportunity uh, i think it went really well and good news and good things came out of it 
but I also hope that um, CIG is still open to doing that with, with myself and other people going forward. As the game come, becomes more and more out there, I think that'll be the case. You don't even have to talk about the game, right? Just talk about, like, how did you get here? It's interesting, too. Glad to be back up and running, Lady Space Patrol. Good to see you. Can't help thinking uh, that a lot of these advanced features they are planning on getting into the game will discourage a lot of casual players. They will. But that's kind of what we've been trying to... I, I've put out several videos, I know, in the last several... In the last, like, three years. Um, and I know a few others have as well, that, like, this game is going to be kind of cumbersome. It's not... It's not going to be super casual. There's a place for casual players. Whoa. Uh -oh. There's a place for casual players. Um, but uh, they're not. What? Oh, did I just get? What's going on? Why am I just now getting that? Man, I hate these phones sometimes. They just give you notifications that are like two hours late. Um, and now I don't even know what I was talking about. Oops. <laughs> ADHD, folks. Clarified that statement over on Spectrum. I don't think I need a clarification. I think it makes sense. But again, I, I understand why he did. And that's what makes me a little bit nervous. Because... In the, in the overall context of the podcast, the statement makes sense. But the fact that he feels he needs to clarify it means that there is enough focus on that one statement out of the context that it's being taken a little bit of the wrong way. Um, they've made a few different statements over the years. Things like 9 to 1 AI to human ratio. 90% um, of your interactions will be PVE. Or uh, what else? Uh, AI in the game can use all the services and do all the things that players can. All of these statements they make throughout the years very much point to the fact that they want to heavily focus on AI interactions and rely on those for a lot of gameplay. Doesn't mean that it's not PvP, but I think that's what he was trying to get at. Like, we're building a game that is focused on allowing players to play um, using the different systems that are in it, and that will also allow for PvP to take place. But I think, I think people took that more as we're not going to focus on PvP because that's not what we're building the game for. Ninety percent of the encounters will be... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, they've, they've said things like this before. Are you the only one watching Wing Commander today <laughs> on its anniversary? I've watched a couple clips of it today. I have not watched the whole movie yet, though. Help you feel better about Master Modes and shows that CIG is trying to get people on board. Honestly, that talk made me feel a lot better about Master Modes. I don't have very many problems with it, um, but that gave me a lot of context, I think, for what they're going for. And it, I think it also just spoke out towards a lot of what they're doing, which is building a game for a lot of different types of ships. Abdi, what's up, dude? How you doing? Yeah, people will use statements to mean what, what they want them to mean. And I think that's part of why devs are hesitant to talk about that stuff. Oi, okay. Ooh, here's an exciting statement. Remember I was just saying, like, if I heard these statements two months ago, two years ago, I'd be going crazy. How about this? Work continued on jump points with the team implementing an updated alignment mechanic. A new UI was also added to give players information on whether their ships are capable of completing travel. Successful tests transitioning between Stanton and Pyro across two servers were completed too. Uh, uh. Dude, like the... It's just a statement in a monthly report, but if we had seen something like this back in 2022, I think people would have said they were lying, <laughs> even though we expected Pyro was supposed to be out by that time, just because it's it just 
What do you mean servers are meshing? What are you talking about? That doesn't happen. Two years. <laughs> two, two years. We're on the road to server meshing. Don't say that. Would have been a great watch party. Yeah, we need to we need to do that little watch party on Discord at some point. Wing Commander, the movie could have been so much better if they stuck with the canon in the games. How many movies were there? How are you both doing? So happy to see y'all streaming and putting out content. Abdi, we're glad to be getting back up to speed. This is. I think this is like day, day, day one, day two of things working. I actually just got my audio working, so now we can start pushing out videos again too. I should have something on server meshing out to you guys this weekend with another follow-up on distribution centers next week, and then a focus on core gameplay after that. And then a focus on all the gameplay aspects and starts. I'm excited. I'm just excited to get back to work, folks. Good to be back. Love the Wing Commander movie. It, it, I, a good movie takes the proper amount of cheese. Does Wing is Wing Commander gonna bring the cheese? And is it melty cheesy goodness kind of cheese? Because from what I've seen, <laughs> they handle the job perfectly. Okay, another big system, another ridiculous system. God, the, for the resource network and engineering, heat gameplay was added, which enables items to generate heat based on their usage. Items will require coolant if necessary and will overheat and degrade in functionality. Oh my god! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is so good. There's so much good stuff here. What do I do with all this? Mm. Can I show you how long we've been waiting for freaking heat gameplay? Let's dive deep back into the... <laughs> We're going back, my friends. In the Star Citizen Wayback Machine to like 3.5 maybe? Like, oh my god. I promise I did not set that up. I also promise that I didn't actually know it was in 3.5. It's just a very good click. Um, April 17th, 2019. The heat system was added. Well, improved. Improvements to the heat system to provide more systemic experience between items and vehicles. This will cover a variety of issues and their effects on vehicles, from how heat affects various components in a ship to incorporating heat values into the room system, all the way up to defining the ambient heat of a solar system. How many people have noticed that? Show of hands, because I can see your hands. Don't think I can. I see you, Tom. Put them back. No. Putting, me, putting them behind your back doesn't mean I can't see them. I see them. They're there. Show of hands, folks. How many people have noticed the heat system in Star Citizen? <laughs> or been affected by it? No hands are showing. <laughs> Oh, I see somebody. Okay, somebody's got a hand up. Yeah, this is, it's basically non-existent for most gameplay. You'll kind of notice it um, with misfires and stuff, which I think is also something they added shortly after this. Somewhere. Yeah, degradation improvements and misfires. So like, this is all the same kind of thing, right? We're talking about the UI, the HUD, the... Um, the underground facilities we've got right now, the star map, the looting system, the inventory, uh, platforming, locomotion, all of these things that are getting updated right now are all the stuff that they added in the 3.0 cycle to just get us through the 3.0 cycle until the game was ready. And you just go down this list and you just start to see how many of these things were just placeholders to get things to work until they could actually put in the real version uh, in, on top of the game. So what they're showing here now is the heat system. And this is kind of your, more of your atmospheric um, deterrent of, of ship flight, but also this will affect you in the game. You have to control coolant 
you have to make sure it gets to where it needs to go in order to keep your ship cool and you also have to control power and um data i think um gravity life control so like oxygen supply there's there are several things that will apply to every single ship and this is going back to again the size of the ships you're flying if you don't want to have to deal with this kind of stuff fly smaller single person ships if you are going to fly a big ship bring somebody with you who can also help with this if need be and if i can find the right thing what am i i'll hit this and this all comes with like a UI. So you'll be able to go in here and affect what's actually going on with your ship and how it's being um, managed. But the heat system also has a secondary thing that, that makes it a bigger deal. And that's something I asked Yogi about at the podcast, but he didn't talk about. No, instead he said, I can't talk about that, but you, you know, the engineering people. Now we have to try and get an engineering person on the podcast, but the heat system is going to affect the way you can fly in game because right now, right now you can hover as much as you want in atmosphere and you all remember hover mode yet another feature that was added into the game, uh, back during this cycle and is going to be updated with the features being worked on now, all of it's just all is all placeholder. But if you go and look at how the ship flight works in game now, taking flight, I think it was, you can hover as much as you want in game in any orientation, it doesn't affect you. But once we get to this point where heat starts to make a difference, the way your ship controls in atmosphere will be dependent on how fast you're going. If you're going fast enough, it will use the aerodynamics to keep you up. If you're going too slow, it'll have to use the thrusters. The slower you go, the longer you have to use the thrusters, the more those thrusters wear and tear, the more heat they build up, the more they start to damage your ship. This is going to be a way that the game actually limits how much you can just hover in place if you don't have a ship that's specifically made for it. Uh, I believe Yogi talks about it here in the demo from CitizenCon. What system? How do you come to a stop now? To come to a stop with the new system, you need to purposefully put the ship into a stall. But don't worry, when we don't have the thrusters disconnected, IFCS will help you. So you're going to bring down the speed more and more until you're reaching stall speed, which is about now. And then the thrusters will kick in and, and catch you. That means However, you are now in a state that the thrusters don't, don't like, right? So at the moment we have turned this up, but in the future you will not be able to hold this for long. So if Brent, for example, now from a hover, strafe is left. See, that's, that's Yogi saying that. This isn't, it's not me. <laughs> more left, more left, more left. The wind flow again pulls the ship over and you go forward again. So that's showing the relationship between aerodynamics and your thrusters and how your thrusters will need to be used to keep you aloft. But they still don't talk too much about this because I think control surfaces and heat, at least from what Yogi was saying during the podcast, are still a ways out compared to this engineering gameplay. So they've got engineering working. Don't know if it'll affect flight, but it's definitely going to affect the way that we manage our ships. Uh, Zero, thank you so much for the gifted sub. Appreciate you, buddy. Life support is now also fully integrated in the resource network with the life support generator and tank now functional. This is, I know I'm getting into a lot of detail with these things, but these are super important, super important things. Life support is another one of those features. Uh, remember I said wear and tear, uh, you know, the, the damage, even the heat system. Life support's another one of these things that's like, it, it's gonna force you to make decisions that the game wants you to make bringing other people on board your ship or choosing not to. Like you could have a Pisces and you could fly that Pisces into a spaceship and land and uh, become basically a boarding party with however much space, let's say eight people inside of your Pisces. That's not very realistic, but you can do it in this game. The way that they block that from happening is by having a life support system that will literally see you all choke to death if you're on that ship and there's not enough oxygen. And you could just wear helmets, but you could see how this can be expanded for other types of ships and other situations. Um, and it's detailed enough to where if your ship runs out of life support and you have no way of getting oxygen, you could just fly into atmosphere, open your doors, refill your life support system, and then fly back out into space. So it's a pretty cool Toes. systemic way of doing things. And 
I'm interested to see how it balances the game out. Halston Coop, thanks for the sub, bro. For radar and scanning, oh, sorry, debugging tools were added for the room system to help better understand how the resource network and re life support interoperate. Cool. For radar and scanning, core game, ooh, I need to speed up. <laughs> core gameplay completed an important refactor to reduce the number of radar components on vehicles and share data between seat operators. Previously, each, each seat operator had a unique radar. Now vehicles can share a single radar across all operators. This means that a pilot or radar operator can focus on collecting radar and scan results that are then shared between all vehicle turrets, rather than each turret needing to scan for themselves. While it's still possible for vehicles to contain multiple radars in time, the team will merge the majority into a single shared unit that will not only improve performance, but gameplay too. Preparing for, honestly, this is obviously a, a big preparation for exploration focused things, but this is also kind of creating a new role for ships. This makes it way more realistic that larger ships are gonna have a an actual radar operator as like, hey, I'll come and be your pilot. Oh yeah, I'll be your engineer. I'll, I'll be your turret and I'll be your radar operator. I mean, it might not be useful if you're not doing exploration or combat, but still. Seeing things that build out that multi-crew role uh, of the game is really cool. Will players be sucked out of a pressurized room if a door to a vacuum is opened, though? My friend... You're on a space tomato stream. Ask and you shall There's receive. The system bleeds out so we know the amount of bleed out. And here we go, this is a test. And when the doors open, there you are. Uh, it's, there's a vacuum out there and then there was oxygen and the room system bled out to there and it was done. And it only happened when the door fully opened because uh, that, the particular in the test there on the door, that was basically saying, uh, once it's opened, I'm open versus, oh, I'm open, uh, you know, I'm, you know, as as you opened it would increase which would be something we would fix this is just a very <laughs> sorry i kind of cut you off there chris that is an old clip a very old clip i think that's 2017 or 2018 um but yes explosive decompression is planned hard enough to get people to man a turret in this game i do think you'll have to mix roles like uh yeah you can be in the turret and also run engineering role or something like that but I'm sure it also just depends on what you're doing. The team also supported elevators for the upcoming instance hangars and supported quantum travel and markers working alongside server meshing when transitioning to a new solar system. Um, for Arena Commander, I want to get past this idea that they've dropped Re Arena Commander because people keep kind of shitting on the idea that it's not going anywhere and it keeps going places every month um it's not prioritized but clearly they're the people who are working on it are still doing some pretty good work and and continuing to develop it the team concluded engineering work for streaming uh which allowed the arena commander team to utilize any persistent universe location with ease and avoid duplicating planets or other object containers that sounds nice is previously required uh culling expensive locations such as cities and space stations yikes the engineering work for custom lobbies is nearing completion. Following successful internal tests, the, team, the system is being handed off to QA for release assessment. The team also began working on basic custom settings such as score limit, time limit, and match cycle options to provide players with more control over their lobbies. Custom games in this, man. Are you doing that in real time? <laughs> yeah. Custom lobbies. Oh, God. <laughs> What a blessing. Man. The life is qualitatious, my friends. Qualitatious. Several internal tests were conducted on engineering experimental modes after an update to the backend matchmaker. New loadouts were created with all the engineering equipment uh, needed for the mode, which is being prepared for a go, no go meeting for the next release. Okay, so I think March, we're going to see a lot of things get flipped from tentative Wait, it's Wednesday. 
We should be getting a roadmap roundup today. We might actually see something flip from tentative to confirmed today for the first time for 323. For those who haven't done much of the Star Citizen obsessing over the roadmap game, which is like the game in the game, it's the real game here. Um, basically, these roadmaps are released tentative. So all of these features are things they want in the patch, but aren't necessarily 100% sure will be there. They're pretty sure, but they're not confirmed. As time goes on and they get closer to the patch, all these different teams start to turn their work into the uh, the main build and see if it works well. If it does work well, generally it goes to confirmed and we hear about it here in the monthly report. That's why we're hearing about the possibility of it now. Tomato way back. <laughs> not really realistic to have 10 people per ship. We are not in the age of having 40 raids now. Exactly. I'd hesitate to see that there say there's no plan in place for things. I mean, we don't we don't really know all the plans going on. Of all the things that they've proven at CIG, it's that they Now, I don't think this is going to jeopardize the game itself and the design, but they realize that they need as many people as possible because there's no roadmap roundup today. Ah, it's cuz they're they want to get it all in for next week, I, I guess. Okay. Um, did we just have one last week? Oh, wow. That's right, because they added the uh, ray trade. No, um, upscaling tech and the cloud improvements. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we've got it for next week. Next week then would be the time that we start to see those updates. Sorry, folks. I'm just super drunk, you know. SE isn't a game, it's a sci-fi, sci-fi game platform on which we could play PvE, PvP, RP, TDT, LOV, IYZ, AMB. I think I was describing how the updates do. No, we were past that. I don't know what I was talking about, guys. Let's get back to this. Um, the team also began focusing on the Arena Commander front end. Recently, focus has been on functionality, but now we are excited to improve not just the overall UX of Arena Commander's UI, but to bring it in line with quality and style established across the rest of the game. Solid. Finally, the team completed the back end work required for Grav Royale <laughs> and other upcoming game modes and maps. They also continued to enable streaming across all maps while supporting the release of Alpha 322.1 with several fixes and quality of life changes. At some point, I know I made a video series recently about everything you can do in Star Citizen, but at some point I need to make a video that goes over literally everything in this game. Arena Commander stuff, PU stuff, following the game stuff, getting into competition stuff. Because if you are, if you're fully engrossed in Star Citizen, and I know there's a lot of you in here, you're like me, we got a problem. But if you're fully engrossed and you're just into it, there's so much stuff. Like I used to be a super fan of Halo. But all I would do is read the books and play the games. And I might go on like the bungee forums to talk about it a bit. But if you're a fan of Star Citizen, <laughs> it's like so many different things to do. And then the game itself actually has a lot of stuff in it now. We just need some like stability, you know? The Garena Commander would be great if it ran at better than 20 frames, but maybe now they have a computer that can do that. I'll feel differently. Core gameplay continued working on an underlying mission system refactor ahead of server meshing. Further progress was made on the mission perks and rewards system too. Good stuff. An update was made to reputation-based hostility, ensuring that if someone is being attacked, any nearby or allied security faction members will come to their defense. This also means that factions will, with negative reputation with the attacked players will not intervene. The amount of questions I have about how this works... Um... Oh, God. Could have a whole podcast about reputation, to be honest. Oh, I love freaking Fall of Reach. Such a good book. Such a great book. 
Um, riddle me this. Let's say you're at an outpost in Pyro. And this outpost is predominantly manned by the citizens of Pyro. The people who are like, they're okay people. You know, they're cool with you, right? Let's say that there is also a rough and ready person at this outpost. Now, citizens of Pyro and rough and ready, maybe they have good reputation at this time, whatever. So they're not attacking each other. What if you attacked citizens of Pyro? Or, and, and then, sorry, another complication. You have good reputation with citizens of Pyro. Your friend has good reputation with... Um... Oh no, did I just turn on tracking? No? Okay, it just blinked at me. Your friend has reputation with Rough and Ready. And you guys shoot the Rough and Re the the citizens of Pyro person. What would the what would the shootout look like? Citizens of Pyro shoot back at you. Rough and Ready has good reputation with you. So they shoot at citizens of Pyro. I think I just confused myself. Let's simplify this. Let's say you're going into a distribution center owned by Crusader and it's being attacked by Ninetales. If your friend has good reputation with Ninetales and you go in there to beat back Ninetales, yum, 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 yum. would Ninetales start, would, would citizens of, or sorry, would Crusader start shooting at your friend because he has a good reputation with Ninetales? Because he also has the mission that you took to protect Crusader. So like, what overrides that? Am I ever going to cover in-game lore? Or have I been doing that and you've just been missing it? I do cover in-game lore every once in a while. Um, unfortunately, covering lore does pretty poorly. Like, just a quick look. If you go back in my videos, there's... So this is a lore video and this is a lore video. And if you look at the way that like these, I don't know why this one didn't do very well, but if you look at the sort of balance of views on videos, the lore videos tend to take quite a bit of work because a lot of research and stuff and finding B-roll for lore can be a little bit challenging, but they, people don't, they don't get pushed very much. I think by YouTube itself, I'm probably going to get more into lore when it becomes more you know, obvious in game. I think it's just not very upfront and center for people to be that interested in it yet, but I do like covering it. And uh, I try to do a video on it every once in a while. And I used to do some narrative readings for it. Actually, if you look on Space Tomato 2, I'm sure you can find, I used to do readings of the lore stories. So I'm, I'm all into it. Just haven't, it has not been, uh, lore is harder to make, I think. Taking a mission can't gloss over bad rep. Right, but so does that mean that Crusader shoots you and if you die, you fail the mission? Like, could Crusader basically make you fail your own mission? Maybe they won't be able to accept the mission, but what if your friend shares the mission with you? Think maybe it would still block you from accepting it? Ninetale guys should go into smuggling area that is protected from scans. The security does not know he is aboard. Yeah. If he doesn't shoot security, he's golden. So maybe just stand by and not not receive any sort of hurt. Hurt. <laughs> yeah, Astro Historian is a good place to go for lore and Star Citizen. Like, he, he will pump out the lore every single week for you. So if you want the regular stuff, I would hit him up. Toes! Block you accepting the mission from your own friend, too. There's some edge cases around reputation that, like I said, they confuse me when I even think about them. But... I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're working through now is like all these weird situations to try and get that working. The contract manager was also converted to building blocks in preparation for the new Moby Glass. Further polish and UX improvements are currently underway in collaboration with the UI team. Looking forward to that. I think we've seen what it's supposed to look like for the most part. We've seen the, the, um, 
Squadron 42 version of this Moby Glass. Specifically this new app in it, and it's pretty clean. Once it comes up, I will show you what it looks like. Here we go. So here's the Squadron 42 Moby Glass, at least as of 2022. I'm sure this has changed quite a bit since then, but it should give you an idea of where they're headed. You can see they've got objectives, notifications, basically a mini version of all your different apps. And then you've got the communication screen here. Uh, and then you've got a mission manager that pulls up a lot of the stuff we already have, but I think it looks cleaner and does a better job of giving you important info. You know, who's showing you the missions, who is it for, what are your targets, where are you going, all that kind of stuff. So that's being worked on, along with a lot of other UI. For persistent and instanced hangers, work began on the instanced interior system. This manages which hangar instances exist, need to be created, and which physical gateways are used to transition between the instance and the rest of the game world. I guess this may be the fact that this work is beginning in February either means it's easy work or this specific feature may be coming in a later part of the 323 patch cycle, like maybe 323.1. Um, Cause work beginning on the instanced interior system for these hangers seems a little bit late. Mr. Shelley is in the tomato house. Wait, what do you mean? Did the did the historian just pop in? Santa Ball made an appearance. Oh, well, his name. <laughs> Uh, the team implemented the initial version of automated cargo loading and unloading, including displaying information on ASOP terminals that the ship is currently unavailable for retrieval due to being loaded or unloaded. How long until NPCs are doing this? We don't know. Will NPCs maybe not actually be doing this in the future? Mm, I think, I think they will, but it's clearly going to be a while. Progress was also made on the freight... Oh, nom, 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 nom. Finally, for core gameplay, the team worked on various debug tools to aid in testing and debugging the various systems that drive instant hangers, the warehouse system, and loading platforms. So that long freaking haul was the core gameplay section. And... Man, am I enthralled. It's good stuff. This is this is kind of new. Uh, I think this is something they started last month through report, reporting kind of all of the gameplay as core gameplay. Um, well, all of the core gameplay, all the stuff that affects everybody really is what's in this segment. And then as you get out, you start talking about economy and other stuff. Speaking of which, economy. Last month, the economy team made changes to bring salvage more in line with the PU's other careers. They're currently rebalancing commodities to improve the cargo career experience too. Just using the word career is good Good times for cargo. Um, economy work is going well. We'll talk more about that, I think, in a deep dive again coming up soon. But overall, they've been putting a lot of time and effort into the economy, which is part of the reason people haven't been super intrigued by the game. It's, it, it never really feels like you have much need to earn money. And when you do, there's not much to spend it on and there's not many money sinks. And so it just it feels a little static. Um, the changes they're making, though, seem to be adding realistic values to all the stuff and getting the game prepared for the game, really. Having all this kind of background economic flow going on while you're doing your stuff makes the game feel more alive than if you run a bunch of missions and then end up with an arbitrary amount of money and nothing to spend it on. Support also provided for the Xenothreat global event and the team began looking at FPS ammo prices. That's a big part of the starting of what we were just talking about. It's like it all starts with ammo, right? Ammo and food. What more do you need? Graphics, VFX programming, and planet tech. Okay, we're going to beeline through the rest of this, folks. Throughout February... No, we're not. We won't do too fast. 
but but I do need to pick things up. Throughout February, the graphics team progressed with their long-term tasks. For example, work is nearing completion on the unification of gas cloud and planet cloud upscaling, though challenges caused by animated lights and gas clouds need to be solved. The gas cloud occlusion effect is also nearing completion, which will increase the level of detail of all gas clouds, even in flat lit scenarios. The team also resolved a long-standing issue that caused a harsh line to appear when 600 meters from where a gas cloud blends with the near fog system. That's a weird one. Here's, the, here's some looks at these systems and the new cloud effects that will be coming into the game right now, tentatively, for Alpha 323. In addition, we made many improvements to cloud shaping to allow for more variation and details. The shape noise blending, a vertical variation has been improved a lot. Also, we made improvements to short and long distance read, and the tiling is less visible. So you can mostly see the occlusion of the cloud lighting, I think, here, uh, specifically what they were talking about. Makes a huge difference. And, and best of all, best of all, we're going to include all these new features and improvements in the next 3.22 release. Okay. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, no, that didn't happen. But now the word is 3.23. So, you know, uh, if that if that doesn't happen, then I'm sure we can sure we can estimate 324. The global illumination team continued to work on a system to approximate complex materials within a ray traced view of the world. Last month, they began looking into performance improvements before tackling some of the more complex issues like moving objects and zones. Yes, that is correct. They are working on their own tra ray tracing solution. See, so it's a simplified single color per object kind of thing. Yeah. Clear it and then slap it onto the entire scene. Now, as you can see, like the middle of the scene is about the right lighting, but everything else has got the middle of the scene's lighting. Like these red lights at the sides, they're basically drowned out by the table bounce that somehow made it across the room to them. So we want to replace that system with 25,000 probes, each one of them only providing light to a small area around themselves. And then we interpolate that to provide like a smooth bounce. And you can see already in the distance, like the red light is, is really bouncing up there. And then we add a screen space occlusion pass just to, uh, just to tidy up the edges on things. And there is the final composite. So I think this, it, it does show kind of the lighting and how it moves around. Uh, but one of the better examples of, of, I think it's a really obvious one here, is this. So this shows how the light literally the bounces pole. off the planet into your ship here. One that I don't have a picture for this, but cargo bays, sometimes they're light, you land somewhere dark, you open up the doors, and now you've just got this weird little light room with, uh, with nothing spilling out of it. So again, let's have a video. Oh yeah, so this is the old system. The sun's working, but you can see there's no sky, there's no ground lighting. By the way, I've turned off a lot of the cockpit lights so that you can see this. So what he's saying is this is what you would see right now if you turned off all the lights in your ship and then did a barrel roll in, on this planet. There's no sky, there's no ground lighting. By the way, I've turned off a lot of the cockpit lights so that you can see this. And then and in here's the new one, you tracing. can already see the skylight is kind of helping or a little. illumination. But then as you turn over, you get all the ground lighting. Oh. 
So they've yeah, been working. <laughs> this is a tech company. It's I, I still don't know if I want to start out this new video I'm making like this, but I kind of compare CIG a bit to Tesla in the sense that it feels like they really started out as a tech company and then and then they really pushed hard and started to produce a product and get that out uh, because they look at them. They just make their own version of all this stuff. A lot of people have complaints about it. A lot of people like stop reinventing the wheel, but they keep doing it because that's what they characters being able to run their hands what they set out to do and have the hair react realistically from hair is a set of physical geometry to the, the damage system and the entities on top that can break off to well it's i mean okay difference. water interactions is something you do with everybody this isn't to say cig is the only company that does this please don't 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 think i'm saying that i'm just saying there are a lot of ways to build games most companies don't try and make the all the tech and then make the game they try to kind of do it in in synchronization i think or um use an existing engine but they were very much obsessed with just doing all of this stuff theirself in this game and you know it might be paying off now we'll see you do have a lot of control if you do it yourself Speaking of which, February saw the Vulcan team pushing hard towards release, working through various performance issues such as compiler bugs caused by Vulcan's complex shaders. This is the Vulcan API, by the way. They also worked on a shader cach caching mechanism to compile shaders while the game is loading to avoid hitches. They are also considering whether this process can later run in the patch or to further reduce the chance of compiling when the game starts. Although progressing, this may not be fully complete by the initial public release. One of the biggest things that lags up your game when you start up you know, everything is like super glitchy and it gives a lot of people a really bad impression. You see somebody hop into Star Citizen for the first time on YouTube and they load in and they're like, oh yeah, I heard about this. See, look how the game loads. Ugh. The game might not be bad, but that gives a bad first impression. And I think that this will help with that, especially if they can get it to do this inside of the launcher instead of the game. Epic can't screw over it if... CIG if Epic decides to screw with Unreal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know why they're using all this. I know. Trust me, I've spent a, a horrible amount of time going over this game engine. Um, but I think it's a really interesting case. To, that just goes to show the power of using your own game engine. Because that's a huge debate. As I think the game industry and, and sort of gaming culture has shifted more towards awareness of how games are made. And I, while there's still tons of stupid debates and people getting angry at devs for doing things that are out of their control, one of those things that comes up a lot is game engines. What game engine is that game using? Why is everyone switching to Unreal? Why is Unreal so good? Why aren't people using their own game engines? And Star Citizen's a pretty good example of why. It takes a lot of money and smart people and time. And now it works for them, but before, Obviously, it gave them a reputation that... Mm, mm, meh. Didn't do them too much. Too good. You have ambient lighting in your room to match the game, so this will help. So oh, that's going to be pretty cool. Lighting effects seem simple, but they add so much to the immersion. Definitely more bespoke for their engine than generic RTX or AMD variant. Right, for their uh, upscaling and, and all that jazz. They have to intend to license this? I don't know. People, it seems to go back and forth a lot. A lot of opinions on that. Most companies didn't hire the, the core Crytek core devs. Yeah, that helped. Honestly, they got the, they got the Crytek people they got, um, and then they also got the uh, uh, Turbulent people. Those are two incredibly tech-heavy companies. And I mean, I know they didn't acquire Crytek, but you might as well have. You didn't get the IP, though, or the uh, patents. Buster! Hello, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, I saw your tweet. I hear good things. 
I got my fingers crossed for you, Buster. I hope things work out. I really do. I think that's an awesome opportunity for you. Look forward to seeing how it goes. All right. Let's continue. By the way, go check out Buster, folks, if you haven't. Also a streamer here for Star Citizen. Working up some good uh, good gameplay and... Well, I, won't, I won't do any leaks, but play some Star Citizen. Check out her profile. Go give her a follow. Crytek devs are wizards. You're a wizard, Crytek. Devs from the Water Strike team closed out the issues that can't... Jeez, did I just blow out my mic? I'm sorry, guys. I'm a bit loud, aren't I? Devs from the Water Strike team closed out the issues that came up in their final review alongside several new features, including FPS interaction for accurate collisions when vehicles hit water and an improved water intersection shader. SDF assigned distance field basically allows the game engine to trace a um, a 3D shell or, or sort of a outline of an object in the game. So they use sign distance fields for shield effects. They use them for atmospheric re-entry when the fire effects come on. They're gonna use them for water collisions and there's probably other things they use them for, but they allow for collisions to happen between assets. Does Buster rhyme? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Last month, the Planet Tech team began improving the editor workflow for creating planets and planning out the next version of Planet Tech V5. Planet Tech V5 will cover a variety of areas, but the primary goals are to make creating planets quicker and easier and to try and achieve more diversity, density, and consistency and quality across whole planetary surfaces. They've said some interesting things about this. Um, have a listen to the future of planet development. This is kind of where Planet Tech V5 is going to be going. Is that it's going to give us the ability to add more complicated logic on so we can type of do more diverse and interesting terrain, like things like, you know, if we don't have beaches at the moment, we'll be able to achieve that. And there's other similar things where, based on the local conditions, we're able to do more advanced decision making. Next thing we want to look at, which is probably the thing we get asked about the most, is our scattering system, which is what's responsible for putting all the trees and the rocks down in the world. Um, we're going to, again, move this to 100% of the GPU, and that should let us have vastly <laughs> longer <laughs> draw distances uh, right up until the horizon and much better performance. Uh, so we'll finally get rid of the dreaded pop of trees coming into you. Um, we also have to integrate it with our harvestable system, the resource system, and the, the awesome fire system you just saw a minute ago. Um, another point is it's going to be a hierarchical based system, which what that means is we'll be able to use nearby vegetation or rocks to influence what other vegetation and rocks can grow or will show. <laughs> and this lets us produce much more complicated rule sets so we can do things like have a tree that maybe underneath it, it's, it doesn't have any grass or maybe certain trees come together in clumps and we'll get much more natural distribution of vegetation. And final thing we want for planets is we want to be able to ba ba build them much easier, much faster, and we want to make sure they are truly unique. At the moment, our planets are unique. However, they are built from type of tile sets, like pre-built things that get mixed and matched together and blended in complicated ways so that you don't see the repetition. But it's not truly unique, not in the same way that the Grand Canyon might be, or the River Nile, or Mount Everest. And that's what we want. So to get that, we need to replicate the complicated natural processes on Earth, like geology, climate erosion, and these things are. Can actually give you, hold on a second. I can give you a look at um, what he means by that, the way they build their planets right now using those tile sets, because I do believe this is similar to how um, Starfield was building their planets. And I'm guessing this is kind of a, a pretty industry, or at least it's become a kind of more industry standard way of doing it, building out your randomized tile sets and then procedurally connecting them and finding ways for the terrain to kind of uh, meld into each other. Oh man, there's a lot of planet tech footage here. These are rivers. Hmm. Probably could have done a better search for this. At this point, it's just not that. It, 
Now I'm in a sunk cost fallacy. I'm like, I don't want to give up looking for it because we put so much time into this, but it's really not this important. Wow, these video files just keep going back. It's funny, my server is right here, but you would think I was loading stuff from across the planet with how slow it goes. I can't wait to get like an SSD NAS. Yeah, okay, I'm not finding this, hold on. I got one more option to try and do this. Planet Tech, show me Planet Tech. Here we go. So here are the tile sets, showing you kind of how much you can plug in to change out these terrain, terrain tiles. There are like a lot of settings included here. I don't know if they're gonna show us a good view of it, but you can see how it translates down onto a planet. So they can do this kind of stuff fairly easily and they have a lot of a lot of ability to change these things up but after they do that oh just to make things more interesting you can also see here they, they actually show off the humidity and temperature maps for each planet too so there's a lot they can do to make planets have different sort of values um and they can very easily paint they can basically pick any spot on the planet that is a certain elevation and they can paint it with a specific humidity and temperature or a specific biome so that each part of the planet that falls under those conditions also has what those, that, that biome defines. And that makes it really easy to create um, planet-wide features without having to go across all the planets. It's procedural, but with an artistic touch. So they do a lot of this sort of building of the temperature and humidity maps, also building out these, um, these height maps and then they get them all saved into these tiles. They could come in and select these tiles and then put them together across a certain area to create, you know, certain patterns or um, macro geological conditions. That's kind of what they were talking about here. Found trivial. So we've got three options. We've got offline tools, Houdini, Terragen, things like this. We could simulate all these processes in the engine. But we've started some R&D a few months ago on uh, the web. We can use machine learning to do some of this. So just to give you a quick idea of how that would work or how it could work, if you just start with some random input here, it's just like some noise. Uh, we run it through a, a temporary, simulation, temporary simulation so we can type of get a more uh, reasonable uh, approximation of simulation at different altitudes uh, and latitudes on Earth. Um, and then we, what we do is we categorize all this into different biomes. So based on the temperature and moisture, you'd find out what is a desert, what is a forest. And this, this part is crucial. So this is the input for our machine learning algorithm. We could come up with this image any other way. You could hand paint it as an artist, or we could just randomize the noise to get a different set of images. And then what we do is we take the large data sets we already have from Earth, from Mars, and from the moon, and we train it on exactly the same uh, distribution, uh, so biomes, so forests, uh, grasslands and things like this and by right. training it on exact that's enough about that but planet tech is progressing that's what you need to know the rest of the graphics team focused on improving their upscaling tech ahead of its public release this involved finalizing a new mesh format that gives major performance improvements and we have seen that has ad been added here to the uh roadmap dlsss D dlsssss fsr and in-house um from their own game engine they made their own upscaling Algorithm, I guess, TSR. So again, it's a tech company. They're, they're out here, you know, you wanna hear about upscaling in your game. You don't really expect the game maker to make their own version of it, but it's good to hear. It sounds like it basically is as effective, it's just a little bit less effective, but it's more efficient, I think, which obviously, you know, it's their own custom solution. But I love that. I love that stuff. Lighting. February saw the lighting team continue to support various upcoming PU initiatives, including distribution centers, instance hangers, freight elevators, and the new character customizer. All things that we will be covering in the coming weeks, especially character customizer. I think we're going to have a Citizen Central podcast about that soon. Locations on the EU side in February worked with the feature team to finalize the working prototype for cargo and the new hangar experience. Again, here they are talking about prototype. I don't... But then it also says final art and LODs are now 
uh, nearing completion on all the modifications to hangers necessary for this exciting new feature. So, yeah, I don't know what this this kind of vocabulary around these features that we should be seeing within the next Toes. few weeks is interesting. Vivi Jr., thank you for the sub. Three years! Yo, we were just celebrating three years! Look at you coming in here with three freaking years of subs. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here. We've been, I've known you longer than friends. We are friends, though. Come on. What am I saying? It's like actually crazy how long that we we all get to know each other doing this. I can't believe we've been doing this for three years now. Oh, thank you for gifting out the subs as well. Raffle started on Twitch. You know how it is. And there's our man. Call the prayer. I'm not in the same room anymore, so we're not facing the moss directly. So I don't know if you can even hear that. All right, the Sandbox 2 team worked towards closing out the upcoming distribution centers. For example, art is being finalized and optimized, while level design added the final tweaks to make sure the various areas can support all the gameplay the mission team want to add. Ooh, and what are you adding? Wow. Yo, these places are huge. There's like a pretty decent amount of space between whatever this is that we're sitting on in this picture and the actual distribution center in the distance here. That's like a solid kilometer away. Holy crap. These places might actually be too big. JK, JK, we got spaceships, we're okay. Last month from the mission design, the team continued to work on a chain that comp comprises various mission types at scale and difficulty. You didn't tell me there were going to be mission chains in here. Okay. Oh, okay. Mission mission chains, huh? <laughs> like a, more than 20 minutes of entertainment? Hey. That's pretty cool. Hopefully that means that we get to kill a person and then take their stuff and go sell it. And that's the mission. Instead of just, you know, killing a person and not selling their stuff. Elsewhere, designs for new missions are currently being signed off, while content and technical requirements are underway for future hauling content. Let me haul some pizzas, bruh. The development of Xenothreat 1.2 continued, with changes to gameplay and the implementation of freight elevators, while Blockade Runner received polish and the implementation of freight elevators too. Man, this is this is so much of a not not empty monthly report it's like almost every sentence has something pretty juicy in it february saw a flurry of mission work as narrative focused on the upcoming alpha 323 patch alongside ui and hint text many of the new gameplay features will have corresponding missions fucking magic jesus and the team have been working closely with design to develop the narrative yum, players yum, yum, yum. will experience like having missions set for every new gameplay feature is how people are going to know how to use those gameplay features in sandbox environments. Imagine if we had if we had missions for refueling, how much more people would be using fueling right now. Looking forward, progress continued on future story missions. Did I already? No, I did not say that. This is even more good stuff. These missions will be more involved than typical missions, featuring things like bespoke dialogue and custom logic. The hope is that these types of missions will serve to build out the story of the wider universe and work alongside the more traditional systemic missions. Hopefully, these are our mission giver missions. But I feel like they've got a pretty big change coming to mission givers. We'll have to wait to hear more about. The giveaway has ended out of 716 entries. 520 of them are eligible. Time to draw the winner. Folks, thank you so much for being involved in our giveaway. We started a giveaway, kind of a welcome back to us <laughs> giveaway um, to celebrate us coming back from the ridiculousness of the recent disasters and uh, this home. And uh, now Mrs. Tomato is going to get us a winner and we'll, we'll announce who that is. We've also got a giveaway coming up. I think we might be doing something for a special holiday. But that's that's Mrs. Tomato's call. We'll see what she says. But yeah, congratulations to whoever wins that one. Sorry to see and hear about what happened to your apartment in Turkey. Hope you and Mrs. 
uh, getting saddled again. Good to see you again, mate. Thank you. Appreciate you. We are in the process of getting out of here. Um, it's not, the situation is not great, but we are way better off than we thought we were going to be when we got here. Um, most of the house is not usable. And so we've moved basically all of our stuff into the basement. The only room really that has stuff in it still is this room that we're in literally right now. This is just a tiny room up in one of the top floors. All outside of here is like mold. Next door is the old studio where it's just water is literally dripping from the ceiling. It ain't great. There's mold in the air. Mrs. Tomato has a mold allergy, so she's having some trouble with that. Um, but we've got air purifiers and dehumidifiers and we're doing all we can. We're basically just trying to last it out until the family house is ready for us to move into. Um, Mrs. Tomato's family is uh, in, in contracting and so has done a lot to build their own house here. Um, and we will be living in that house along. It's like a three house house. It's separated for families, but that's where we're going to be moving into. We're just trying to get that process finished up so we can get out of here soon. So thank you for checking in. I appreciate it. We'll be updating people on how that process is going. And um, yeah. Wait, zero one? Zero one the giveaway? How does that even happen? Nice. Congratulations, Zero. Cheers to you, buddy. Enjoy your uh, Mustang Alpha. Or if you don't like a Mustang Alpha, melt it. Get something good. Or if you want, we can also send it to a friend of yours if you want somebody to come into the game. Why Turkey, though? Mrs. Tomatoes from Turkey. Get a lot of fresh air thinking about fungus and stuff. Yeah, we try to keep getting, you know fresh air into our lungs the air the air purifiers keep telling us how dirty the air is though <laughs> zero won all the raffles and used all the points scam it's rigged congrats zero all right i think we're on to r d here um, last month, the narrative design team continued to develop tourist behavior that will bring new life to the Star Citizen large in-world events. It has been an interesting balancing. It has been interesting balancing how to make sure the NPC presence is felt while not being overly distracting from the event itself. I appreciate that. Loud tourists can get kind of annoying. R and D in February, the R and D team continued to work on the temporal render node. History filtering was switched to a custom bicubic filter to avoid diffusion and resampling blur due to repeated history lookups. <sighs> Those history lookups. Care was also taken to eliminate potential ringing artifacts during strong camera movements. For, for context, I don't know what any of that means. The temporal filtering of transmittance was... That sounds like a... I want to say that sounds like a, a an album name from like carbon-based life forms or something the filtering of transmittance. It was improved to avoid glowing thin silhouettes around objects in foregrounds with clouds and the sun behind them. Various improvements were made to preserve history details for as long as possible. Hmm, history details? Is that like, what was George Washington's favorite color? Just write it down. And to quickly converge to a full resolution image in case history needs to be rejected. Oh, we reject history strongly. Yeah, we don't learn for our mistakes, unfortunately. ISC? Oh, I was going to say, why would I ISC? <laughs> All right, tech art and animation. Last month, the tech animation team focused on refining head assets and cleaning up technical debt around their implementation. This comes as a precursor to polishing head assets and refining eye alignment in the editor to ensure characters look as good as possible. Gotta keep those eyes aligned. Starts to look weird. Further to this, I'm talking about real life, by the way. Further to this, a large contingent of the department is working on asset set up for lockers. These will be placed throughout the verse and allow players to end NPCs to change their apparel to something more appropriate to their current priorities. I wonder how lockers are changing. Because they've talked about lockers as kind of being these custom places where you could put your whole, your whole loadout 
your multi-tool, your armor, your undersuit, your helmet, all that stuff, and then just go to the locker and switch out all at once. Wondering if they're still sticking to that. Nom, 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 nom. The team said, this sounds simple, but in practice, we have to support a wide array of assets that can be stowed and recovered from these vessels. It can take quite some time to ensure everything is set up correctly. The team also kicked off initiatives to ensure the health of the build remained stable and triage technical debt built up over the course of the project. Oh boy, that's rough. Last month, the VFX team continued working on several upcoming locations, including freight elevators and distribution centers. They also investigated an issue with planetary ground storms, where fog was coming in too thick when light winds arrived. Although it is difficult to balance dynamic effects such as this, it will be easier for players to see where they are going if a storm is relatively mild. I really hope we get to see the fog actually moving. Because right now when you see a storm, sometimes you don't even see the clouds, but a lot of times they just kind of appear. I hope that we get to see the fogs riding the light winds. That's That would be a cool feature. But that is your update, folks. Oh, I, I love ambient music, Charles. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm basically universally... I'm universally listening to Stellar Drone when I'm working, when I'm recording a podcast, when I'm recording uh, um, a video script. Carbon-based life forms. Who else? Who else do I have on here? Carbon-based life forms. Um, Stellar Drone. Oh, they don't have all the uh, the actual names of them here. Yeah, that whole that whole genre is kind of that's that's my jam for when I'm just chilling. But yeah, that's it, folks. That's that's what you get. Welcome to the monthly report of February. This was a freaking juicy one. I'll tell you what. Holy crap! There is a lot of stuff coming up. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's it's actually a little difficult to decide what to cover in a video, cause. You haven't heard of Stellar Drone? Oh, my friend, you're in for a treat. Listen to, I think it's called Light. What's the album called? Light Years. Go listen to the Light Years album. It's so freaking good. Holy crap. Um, There's so much coming up and being worked on. I don't really know entirely what to make videos about. I'm definitely covering server meshing, distribution centers. Um, and uh, gosh, what else? Probably should do something on the new cargo profession whenever they cover that. And UI updates I'll have to hit for a video. There's just too much. How do I do cover all this stuff? This is amazing. It's 323 is looking good, yes. But like a lot of the stuff in this monthly report is past 323. Um, they're talking about jump points here. They're talking about engineering. Talking about... Um, the, the upcoming missions and changes in those and these ships and this stuff and all these things and AI, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with like, Hey, things, things are looking good. Keep, you know, don't, don't get too hyped. Cautious optimism is key, but like 2024 is looking like a really good year. And I know I've said that there's, there's been good years before. <laughs> Oh, I've said there's been good years before, and I do think that we've had good years. But those were good years in the formation of the game, or the formation of the engine. You know, we were getting persistent entity streaming. We were getting um, the Gen 12 renderer. We were getting uh, looting systems and missions and locations. And, like, those things were good. But we're seeing multi-year initiatives finishing up right in front of us. And it's... It's, it's a different kind of year for sure. Last year was supposed to be a good year. I think last year was a good year, to be honest. Um, getting persistent entity streaming, getting salvage, uh, getting the cargo container changes, all of those things, in my opinion, changes. And the Ren Gen 12, I think actually less persistent entity streaming, but more salvage cargo enhancements and the rendering improvements that we got, I think made net last year pretty good too. But that's in, rel that's in relation to previous years in Star Citizen. No years are going to feel like good years after 24 and 25 when we actually start getting a lot of stuff. So call it what you want. Shifting the goal, goal posts, 
removing a hurdle, whatever it might be. The, I can't remember what the name is. I think it's like a, mostly used as a political term. The, the something window where like you get, you get somebody who's like crazy right or crazy left and they say all these things and that kind of shifts the window to make the things they're saying a little more normal. It's kind of the same thing in my opinion. As this game continues to progress, the stuff that seemed like it was a big deal last year is not going to seem anywhere near a big deal anymore. The The fact that we're getting... Um, I can't even think of a basic one, but for instance, we one, one time we got the addition of the ability to buy ships, and it seemed like it was amazing. Now, years later, it's like, are you serious? <laughs> we couldn't buy ships? Overton window. Thank you. That's it. The big toe window. GII is listed on RSI as one of the fastest orgs. I mean, have you seen GII's racing? It's beautiful. We have some of the, the best racers I've ever seen. Never seen so much good stuff on the horizon and you've been following for three plus years. Yeah, there's a lot. For me, it's a star map and a new looting system. You're looking forward to, I can't wait for a star map. Can't wait. Good year, but game unplayable at this point where no streamer plays SC anymore. What? I don't know. Still a decent amount of people playing. I'll say the game is not playing great, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's unplayable. Getting bored of SC because there's no progression yet. Those dang streamers. Imagine only being able to run around in a hangar and unable to fly. <laughs> Yeah. All right, folks. Um, like I said, I've got places to be. I'm sure you do too. We've all got to go and sit down and stew in all this news. No, I'm going to go get some dinner. Uh, appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much for coming to this. This is our first real stream back. Finally have two PCs again. So I'm, we're back to things. We're going to do normal things now. We're going to be playing the game next stream. So you'll be able to see how much better it plays on this new PC. And uh, we'll do some org gameplay this weekend because we got a new, well, we may possibly have a new event starting this week. We'll just have to see. But yeah, thank you all for coming. Hope you had a great day. Uh, you know, wiggle your big toe, stay warm, eat something good and healthy, smile at somebody, have a good time. And I will catch you all on the next one. Yeah, too bad they, they delayed those vehicles and hangers, but we got engineering and AC. What can I say? Tech comes online, some of the design direction changes spoil it for you. Some For some people, I think it's gonna be best to wait and get the whole package at some point, but um, fun to experience while it's being built. Whatever you decide. Appreciate y'all. Have a good day. Much love.